Jamie and I went for a drive in a neighborhood close to where we live and we were looking at corbels that were on some of the older homes here for the inspiration for this video and I think we found a design that will work really well. Here I am drawing out the design of the corbel, and yes, I am using a cup from our kitchen. I use bowls, mixing bowls, depends on the size. I do have a compass that I can get stuff really round with, but I prefer the simpler way with the cups. It's really easy, fairly accurate, and I usually don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with the design. Here you see me using a battery to draw out the ends of the teardrop shape that I'm gonna design. And yes, I can draw a circle, but you know, I'm just showing you my process on how I create and how I draw things out. You don't have to have a bunch of fancy tools to get stuff done. I've got the corbel designed up, I've got the template printed out right here, and we'll have more of those on the website, jamierayvintage.com. There's going to be a blog post on it with a PDF that you guys can print out if you wanna just copy this same design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace the back of this and get some pencil marks on there with my handy dandy frequent flyer pencil, and then I'm gonna transfer that onto the wood. So with the pencil, I'm just going to get some good lead put down everywhere I want to trace on the other side. And this just takes a sec. Or you could cut it out if you want. Um, you know me, I'm lazy, I don't cut stuff out. This board I'm using is just a 1x6 from Home Depot. It's just common pine. Uh, their common board section. I think it was like three, four dollars, something like that. I'll have the exact price for you in the breakdown. I'll put that in the description so you have it. I'm now going to trace on the board from the template and then I'll do it again. That way I have two cutouts because I'm going to need to cut out three pieces of this per corbel and I'll show you how I transfer that on. I'm just going to trace along my line here everywhere I'm going to make a cut. And you don't need to fill in this whole outline here, you can just trace the outside of this shape. Alright, I'm gonna, I can see the template pretty good here, the tracing, but I'm gonna just go back through with the Sharpie so you guys can see it good on camera. Now that I can see how big this is gonna be on the board, I could have measured it too. I'm just gonna lay this out and then draw a line right here so I know how long to cut the board. Cause I'm gonna need six of these cutouts. Two of them I might make a little narrower and I'll show you show you why and how. I got my boards cut out. If you don't have a saw at home that can handle this, you could easily use your saber saw or jigsaw to make those cuts. You can also have the guys down at Home Depot do it for you. I know Lowe's does some of the wood cutting too, so if you need to get some of that wood cut to size, just have them do it for you. But this is just my Black & Decker. I'll have pricing and things on this. I haven't looked it up in a while, but when I bought this, it was $39. And it's been a few years. This, this has got some miles on it. And you also need some sort of drill so that you can make these points here. And that's also gonna be the end of all of these little teardrop shapes. I've got a piece of scrap wood up underneath and I'm gonna take my drill now these ones here you want to be careful because these are gonna be the full width that's gonna be the uh, the end of your your teardrop there I'm just gonna hold my cutout on the end of my workboard. You can see 
I've got some cuts here and things and that's okay because this is just cheap melamine I'll just replace that later but if you got a nice workbench and you're concerned about it getting cut you maybe don't want to do this up against that find a different surface but you can clamp down if you want I'm gonna just hold it mine down when I do it and that'll keep it from jumping as I use the saw and just make sure it's stable because you don't want that vibrating all over the place on you. I've just got a scroll bit in here and it's made for wood for doing curves and things. It's real thin and narrow and mine just locks in like this. There's also a style that has like a T-shape that holds them in. Depends on your saw. Here we go. Sometimes I gotta use my left hand. The first shape is done, so I'm just going to use it as my template now. That Black & Decker is a little bit on the light side. It likes to jump around a little bit. Honestly, I'm using it in the video just to show you guys that you can do stuff with cheap tools, but I don't, don't recommend it. It's not, I mean, it'll get you by. It, I've used it. It's worked. All right, last piece of this particular corbel is the center, which you just cut out the outside. And if you wanted to, you could go back in and just take a quarter inch bite or so all the way around and cut that, and that'll give you a little more detail, which I may do. I might do it on these. I realize I may have made some of these cuts because they're so tight a little difficult to replicate. So I apologize for that. If you're beginners, do the outside first, see how you feel on that, and then start doing the inside cuts and see if that works out. If not, this is still a pretty cool design if you put three together, three of these pieces together. Sometimes when you're doing these corbels, you get fun negative space results, and uh, I, I feel like that's some weird kind of exotic bird. All right, back to business. All the pieces are now cut out, and it's time to assemble them. You could use a pneumatic nail gun. You could just glue them together. That would work well. Or you could also use just regular old nails and hammer them in. Either way. I've got some inch and a quarter finish nails. Combined, this is going to be two and a quarter inches long, so that'll be plenty to get down through this three quarter inch material and into the other piece without going all the way through. I always like to glue and then use nails or screws to hold it together while it glues tight. So I'm going to glue this up here. That should be more than I need. Make sure your edges are lined up. So everything's looking pretty square, nice and good. If it's not, you can always go back in and sand it down a little bit and smooth those out. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure here so that they don't shift while I'm hammering it in. All right, still square, looking good. I'm gonna put one more right there. 
Now, I made my inner piece just a little narrower, so I want to make sure I'm going in here so I don't split my wood. All right. Now let's put on this other side. Alright, off camera I made a second corbel. I'm going to stain them now and then I'm going to milk paint them with flower sack is going to be the color I'm going to use. That way they get a nice chippy look with the milk paint. And then I'll distress that and that'll hide a lot of the imperfections. Now, they're not perfect. They're, I'm using, using a hand tool like that with the saber saw, it's hard. Typically I would cut these out on the band saw or even a scroll saw. You can see here, I got this one cut out a little more than this one, but you know, when they're sitting on the shelf and they're painted up and distressed, you're not gonna really notice that too much. And if you're a perfectionist, you, you can take like a little, uh, you could take these files here or even smaller files before you glue them together and just get those shapes perfect, chisel them out however you want to do it. Take a uh, coping saw and clean that up. I am not a perfectionist. I, I can be if I have to be, but I like the imperfections. It kind of gives it some charm and actually when it's painted, it'll it'll make it look like it's worn or weathered or chipped out or or actually older than it is, even though we use new wood. Jacobian in Minwax. It's my favorite to put underneath when I'm when I'm painting to distress, just because it gives a real nice dark contrast. Got my milk paint mixed up. It's been sitting so it's not as foamy and I'm just gonna brush this on. The, the stain is not dry yet, which is on purpose. I feel like it helps it chip a little better. And I'll put a couple coats of this milk paint on here so that it gets a nice bright crisp white. This is just a small round brush that I picked up from the craft store. Coat number two going on. There we go, now we're gonna get that bright white. Time to distress and seal. The corbels are done, so I'm, I'm really happy with how they turned out. The milk paint on there gave them that perfect chippy look, and it even has some crackling in the paint, like it's been sitting out in the sun and weathering on someone's porch. You can use these for home decor, you can make shelves out of them, and in an upcoming video, I'm going to show you guys how I use these to make shelves, because we're going to be doing some shelves in the office here in the next few weeks, hopefully. Don't, don't hold me to it because we're super busy doing a bunch of shows and traveling out of state. But anyway, corbels are done. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want the template for these exact ones, we have those on the website. I'll put a link in the description below so that you guys can find that on our blog. 
Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.